and welcome to the Skating Lesson Podcast. I'm Jennifer Kirk, a former U.S. Ladies competitor, a three-time world team member, and a former Four Continents Ladies champion. Had to add that in. Way to rub it in. <laughs> I'm Dave Lee. I was not a Four Continents champion, but I am a figure skating blogger and a current adult skater. In this video, we're going to discuss the ladies event at the Four Continents Championships, which took place last weekend in Osaka, Japan. And some of our favorite skaters, they weren't actually at this event. Uh, Ashley Wagner and Yuna Kim chose not to compete in Four Continents. And I'm wondering, Dave, do you think that was a good decision on their behalf? What do you think about their decision? Well, I think for Ashley, it was actually a great decision. She had such a strong season heading to the Grand Prix final. She got a little injured. Then she had some food poisoning before nationals. She didn't have a great skate at nationals in the long. And I honestly think this is perfect for Ashley. Um, I don't know that she would have done that well here coming right off of nationals. I think when you're defending, it's probably so stressful, I imagine, defending your national title. that having to compete a week and a half later, it's a little bit too soon. And I really think that that's something that United States figure skating really needs to look at. They've known this for years. They have to really look at, do we want to win four continents? Are we going to send our champions there? Run down. At least the Canadians have another week. And the Japanese ladies haven't competed since Christmas. So they have more time to get up. And if this is going to be a very important international event, I think they should move nationals back to give our skaters a little bit more time to prepare and to come down and prepare for this event. So I think it's sharp for her. For Yuna Kim, she was uh, skating with Michelle Kwan. I think I'd rather skate with Michelle <laughs> Kwan than uh, have to face off with my big rival before Worlds and risk any of that mind game. So for her, we'll have to see. It's, it's a risk being having such a long break between her nationals and worlds, but um, I'd rather skate with Michelle Kwan too. One of the things you talked about, Dave, is the timing of this event, particularly for U.S. skaters. And there's been questions for many years in terms of how does this event stack up compared to Europeans? Because it really should be, or many people argue that it should be equivalent. It's, you know, for North American skaters and whatnot. Do you think that it, it is equivalent to Europeans in terms of the field? What type of skater do you think this event is really paramount for? Well, it used to be a B-list skater competition. Um, I don't think, I don't mean that offensively. It just, who went? And it, they, in the last five, six years, more of the top, top skaters have gone. But we've also seen skaters who habitually skipped it every year, like Johnny Weir. And then we look at this year, Patrick Chan isn't here, Yuna Kim isn't here, Ashley Wagner isn't here. Yet the top dance teams are here, and all of the top Japanese ladies, Caitlin Osmond's here, Gracie Gold. So it's, it's, the top European skaters don't skip the European championships. I think it's a timing issue that needs to work out if they want to make it. The top event, it's, Almost a Europeans. This year there was a very strong competition, but you never know who's going to withdraw and who's not going to go. So I think scheduling. I agree. Well, as we take a look at the results right now, you talk about that strong competition. It was a J Japanese sweep. <laughs> Those Japanese women really showed up here at the event in Japan. This, uh, perhaps, as we talk about timing, perhaps it is in, in their favor that they did have that time to come down because I know the couple years that I competed at Four Continents, it's exhausting. You come, Nationals is such just an emotional roller coaster, and you come off of that event, whether you skate well or poorly, you have to get on a plane, you have to travel many, many times to Asia, long plane ride, you get off the plane, you just the jet lag, there's so many different components. But we do see, as we saw in the results, that Christina Gao, top-ranked American skater at this event, what did you take of her performances and her placement at this Close event? Honestly, I think she had something to prove after Nationals. I think she's probably a little bit angry. Um, a lot of people, we were very, just a disclaimer, we were very emotionally charged um, in our <laughs> Nationals recap. And I think one of the things that we didn't, perhaps verbalize, is that it wasn't just the top two that we were upset about. We actually thought that several skaters in the top seven or so were in the wrong order. And we felt like there were some skaters that were promoted, and we thought that Christina Gao got the short end of the stick at Nationals. She had a great fall. I don't know if the judges would agree with me on the panel. I felt that she was held down a bit. Um, and I think that she came to deliver here and to prove that she is a great skater. Yeah. She was fourth place here. Um, I think she's pleasant, nice to watch. I feel like I appreciate Christina Gao, but I don't get excited by her. And perhaps that's something that hurt her at Nationals. I'm not sure. I think she does a lovely uh, short program to close without touching. It's very beautiful. 
She has nice lines. I think she can have better posture. She doesn't actually physically have a long neck, which is something she can't change. Um, you know, so <laughs> she can't get more neck, you know, but it's, it looks a little, she the shoulders. She has a schneck. That's what we would call it. Little to no definition between head and neck. She does. And it's, <laughs> but no, she she's a beautiful it. skater. She is. She's got great lines. It's yeah. just, you know, sometimes people criticize her posture. I don't know if she can really fix that. But I think that she has such a nice short program. She really use, utilizes everything. One thing I think she needs to do is up the ante technically. This is a girl who can do a triple flip, triple toe. She trained with Yuna and she did it for years under Orser. And we see her going for a triple toe, triple toe in the short, triple loop, double axle. She had a mistake on the double axle at nationals. It buried her, potentially cost her a trip to the world championships. And I think here she managed to do a good job. But if she wants to be in the hunt to make the Olympic team and doesn't want to get gypped, I think she needs to do a triple flip, triple toe in the short with a triple loop because she can get an edge call in the Lutz. I don't think it's going to go away at this point in her career. And I think she needs to put the content in, get a little bit more spark. Um, her long program is a tango. Love the short, hate the long. I think it's a nice, it's not a bad program choreographically. However, she has no fire, and if you're going to do a tango, you have to make me believe that there is some sort of sexual energy involved. And I think this girl is studying for a math test when I'm watching this. You can see her thinking. She's thinking through every edge. I don't get the performance, and I certainly don't get a tango, and I think that that actually hurts her marks. It's a mismatch. Skate to something lyrical and beautiful. A tango, if you don't look like you're um, a lusty girl, don't... <laughs> I just think it's a bad choice. It was wrong. Yeah, I think what really her strength is her consistency, and she proved it at this event. She proved it at nationals that she is a pretty clutch skater. Her long program, she had a couple of mistakes here at Four Continents. But overall, she's you can rely on her when she goes out to compete, and I think that's really what the U.S. needs in the ladies' event. But I agree, she's she doesn't have that wow factor, that spark, and it may be her personality that she's a little bit more introverted. But whereas I think the short program really caters to that part of her personality, like you said, you can't skate to a tango if you're going to skate inwards. And with the shoulders, it all kind of hovers within. So I think really it's up to Mark and Peter and the choreographers to come up with a program next season that's going to give her more momentum and wow factor in terms of the second mark. Because if she does add the triple flip, triple toe into her short program, she really has nothing to lose next season. I want to see her going for it. And I want to see her just trusting her consistency and coming out of her shell a little bit more. She's such a beautiful woman, beautiful outfits, really packaged well, but she needs something that can kind of give her a little bit of zhuzh because I think at nationals, like you said, she was buried. I think she was forgotten. Frankly. Yeah, yeah. And another surprise at this event you wanted to talk about, the Japanese ladies sweeping the medals uh, podium. What did you think about that? Well, I thought that Kanako Mirakami, she was someone who's a junior world champion, like yourself, um, but she kind of got buried in her country a bit, like yourself. And I think that she is strong third place. I don't think she's really going to move that up that much in Japan, maybe until after 2014. But she did her... Uh, she visually looked to be doing her best job. She attacked. She went for the jumps. She did have a couple, you know, protocol issues with mm -hmm. under rotations. But she really looked to be doing her best job mentally. She was on. Frankly... You can hate me for saying it or not, but I think that her coach has a history of not coaching girls that have the beautiful extension and the lines that really matter in the ladies' event. When I see a free leg getting kicked around, like, it, sloppy. Um, her coach is known for having sloppy, sloppy ladies skaters for two, three decades now, and it continues with Kanako. This is actually probably her best long program she's ever had. But it's those little details that matter when there are about nine ladies in the world. Say, yeah, with a, and particularly even the Jap Japanese ladies with a, a sure. field that's so rich, you have to just, it has to be the total package. Yeah. So moving on to the champion, Mao Asada, let's talk about some yeah, stuff concerning Mao. My big takeaway from this event was really the triple axel, the short program, best triple axel I've ever seen from Mao. Backwards, there was no under rotation on that one. Wow! Yeah, plus scores from the, from every single judge, and just 
she seemed to be the old Mal. There was this spark back, this fire. She really seems hungry, and it seems like she's peaking at the right time. She did have some under-rotation calls in her long program. I didn't think the double axle triple toe was under-rotated. You can argue, argue with me on this. Obviously, the triple axle was in her long program, triple flip, triple loop. But I love to see that she was going for it. She was aggressive, and she looked happy. And you can't ask for anything more than that. Yeah, in my notes, I have that she smiled in both programs. And this shouldn't be news in skating that someone <laughs> gave two smiles in a program. But Mao is so reserved. She looked happy for the first time in years. And I have to think it's because she's doing the triple axel. This is a phenomenon that happened with Tanya Harding. Um, but sometimes it seems like skaters who do the triple axel, there's an emotional hurdle for doing that jump that happens with their confidence when they go out there. And perhaps Mao didn't think that she could compete with the best ladies in the world without it. Her other jumps have kind of been really criticized by these judging panels. And the triple axel is something that was her key to success in the past. And she frankly looked a little bit lost and lacking in confidence without it. She's doing it again. And like Tanya Harding, if Mao can do a triple axel and land it, the rest of the program is a breeze. She's not usually someone who makes a lot of errors. But you know what I, I really actually like to see in her long program? She missed the triple axel. It was under, under rotated and she stepped out of it. But it didn't affect the program. And I think that long program, she's skating to Swan Lake, so overdone. But it fits her. I love the ending. I love the spiral at the end, the footwork, the dress. She just has that spark. And I think she's hungry. And I hate to compare skaters to Tanya Harding. because, But I think you're right that it, it's the X factor with her. It's something that kind of sets her apart from the other women. And it's great to see her back on it. But, you know, there's one thing about comparing her to Tanya Harding. I'm not, you know, there's a lot with Tanya. But... <laughs> I think people forget that ladies skaters are really tough competitors. They look so nice and they're packaged in these pretty dresses, but they are some of the fiercest athletes you will see in any sports. Mal Masada did three triple axles at the Olympic Games. That is ferocious. That is. You know, that takes such nerve, such confidence to go out there and go for it. And she did it then. She has the triple axle back in both programs. She has the triple triple back. I do you think that with the triple loop, it's really hard to get it credited by the judges when you do it as a second jump? That's always a risk. I think her double axle triple toe is fine, actually. I watched it. I didn't. I personally thought that it was okay. It was far enough around. I wouldn't have ducted it. The triple flip, triple loop is a little bit sketchier. Yeah, as you uh, see on that triple loop, it's that hook at the end. She gets. She's a, a, a really slow rotator in the air in terms of getting into her snap into the position. So particularly when it's that second jump, she has to get into the rotation quicker. Her arms and her legs have to work together. What we'll talk about in a bit with Gracie Gold, I see the same problem with Mao sometimes where her arms don't work with her legs. They don't, they're not a cohesive unit where they snap in at the same time. So sometimes what will happen is her arms will do too much of the work. She'll be it, throw her off, particularly on lutzes and flips. And when you're doing that loop as a second jump after a triple flip, everything has to be tight and snapped and on it. And if you're off just a little bit, it's going to show up on the landing of that second triple. Yeah, sometimes with Mao, I actually notice that her body is around and her skate is not. And that's a big indication. Using her upper said. body, yeah. Yeah, because it, it, they look fine. People get very upset. But if you watch the skate, especially on when she does flips um, and a flip loop combo, you know, the flip has been kind of iffy for her. One good thing that, you know, when she went for the triple axel, none of the jumps were doubled, you know, in the long. On uh, the that's double so sow, she did have, do a double sow. The sow cow has been such a nemesis for her. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, she, some of her money jumps, she was doubling Lutz's, Lutz's flips. And earlier in the season, still winning, but having a lot of doubles, and I thought that she did a much better job of so, going. So summing things up as we head into Worlds, uh, Dave, what are the keys to success for Mao Asada? Triple axel, both programs, she's doing it, and she looks confident, she needs to keep doing it. The triple-triple, she needs to do it, especially in the long. It could help in the short if she really wants to go for a world title to have a clean one, if it's going to be under-rotated or unsure, I think a triple-double is fine, but triple-triple should be a real focus. Um, attack, keep the spark up. She's smiling. Trust her technique and snap those jumps. Perfect. And our silver medalist at this event, Akiko Suzuki, skated well. I kind of love the peacock. I think the key to success.
success for her is just really basic. It's you gotta skate clean. She could be a surprise medalist at World. She could definitely rival uh, Yuna Kim and Malasana if she puts down those two programs. And just personally, I love her story. And that is my soap. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I love her story. I think that she's just a great person on and off the ice, which she's had to overcome her attack. And it just comes down to skating clean for her. Yeah, she's lovely. I don't see her competing for a gold medal as much unless there are mistakes, but I think that if um, she's clean, anything can happen. I think she's about in a, a bronze. She's about in that third position, but I think, you know what? Ice is slippery. Anything can happen. And uh, if she's clean, no waxels at Worlds, and uh, she'll be good. Yeah, just keep it together. So the, her keys to success as we head into the World Championship, just skate clean. One word, clean. Put down those programs, and I think that's an operative word for many different skaters. So now looking at the Canadian. Uh, Caitlin Osman yeah. is so talented. And to me, she's someone who's very athletically gifted, but I see her care about the program and have that spark. So I'm very impressed with that she is trying in both artistically and technically to deliver. Um, conversely, because she's had some success, I personally, I see Skate Canada doing something that they always do, and they do it with their ladies, where if they have someone who just gets a little bit of success, they blow it up to that they're a medal contender. There have been articles, actually even in the Korean press, based on Caitlin's marks at... Canadian Nationals that she's going to challenge Yuna Kim for the gold at Worlds. I think they might be getting ahead of themselves a little much. She's very successful. She's surely a contender. But I think that they are, they have this echo effect where if the commentator says it, then a journalist like PJ Kwong will say it. And then all their former skaters, they'll have Liz Manley talk about how great she is. And there's like an echo effect. And it seems like, sometimes it seems like it's deliberate to kind of help the Canadian skaters and get the buzz going. But I think when you have a first year senior, you can't overwhelm them too much. You have to set the, you know, setting her up to be a rival to Unikim, you have to set the expectations at a realistic level so that she can feel like she achieved something and go on for next year. I well, think that it's too much hype. Yeah, I can understand the fervor around her. She has such charisma and presence on the ice. That short program, she almost uh, skates like an ice dancer. Like it's just a. It's, the way that she carries herself, but I think why she was able to do so well earlier in the season is there were no expectations. She went into Skate Canada just wanting to show up. She was happy to be there, and then obviously walking away with the gold medal was quite a surprise and really took her to the next level. But I think with her, it comes down to focus. You can see in both these programs, particularly in her short program, missing the triple flip, the long program, doing a beautiful triple flip, and then doing a single toe instead of a double toe. Then later on in the program, a double toe, double toe, double toe combination. It just seems, right, it just seems like there's something and it may be a lack of experience. Maybe she's in a little bit too much over her head, but she has the jump, she has the talent. She just needs to, it seems like she's skating in her head a little bit more. She needs to come back to her center. And, and one of the things I really did love though, in her short program, she does footwork into her triple toe, triple toe, lands yes. the jump, then goes into a side spiral, which is so difficult. So she really, when they talk about having transitions in betweens heading into these jumps, not telegraphing them, she's got that down. She's a master at that. Beautiful girl, carries herself really well, just for the focus. So yeah, and I think a little bit more time with her and looking ahead, I think that there could be a little bit more polish and extension in certain areas. Mm -hmm. I think her programs... Um, getting comparing her to someone like Gracie Gold are choreographically better. Um, I think Gracie sometimes can stretch her leg a little bit more. That's something that Caitlin could work on the posture a little bit, but she does carry herself very well. And I think looking at her keys to success, um, aside from I think long term, I'd like to see her maybe with a different choreographer, just bring out bring it out more. But her keys to success for Worlds: two clean programs, maintain that focus ignore the hype, and go out to skate like there's nothing to lose because she really has nothing to lose. If she skates well at Canadian Nationals and they have one spot, she's getting it. So I think um, go out there and attack. So next up, we're going to talk about Gracie Gold, and she's coming off of that amazing long program at Nationals, which had all of us just really excited uh, when we were doing our Nationals recap. But she came to this event. There was pressure. She wanted to deliver and I don't think she did. Uh, the short program was definitely better than at Nationals. But again, it seems like, like we talked about with Osmond, there's a lack of focus, maybe a lack of experience. Short program doing a beautiful triple flip, triple toe, 
turning out of it. She didn't need to. The triple lets, again, a hand down, kind of stepping up. And then uh, the myriad of mistakes in her long program. And I think what happens when she has those mistakes, what is lacking in her skating comes out a little bit more uh, prominently. Where she, I think at Nationals, we walked away from that long program thinking she has the star factor, the it factor, this is that. And that can sometimes, when you're skating really well, cover up what may be lacking in terms of her skating skills and some of the choreography that may be missing in that long program. So it, it, it portends kind of a worrisome feeling heading into Worlds where you think, can she put two clean programs together? What, what did you think? I think that Gracie has so much talent and That's just great. natural talent. She has the look, you know, she looks like a lady skater is supposed to look like. She's very pretty, you know, like mm -hmm. it is kind of, you don't see many ugly skaters out there. You don't. Uh, at the high level, just saying. Um, but she's treading really close to that head case label. And I think that that's a really hard label to get rid of once you get it. She has so much, she has a history in her career of not delivering and then doing really well and then not delivering. And the thing is, people will say, give her some slack. She's a first year senior. But, and I think that, you know what, we'll give her some slack until the world's. But I think I lo you look at the girls who have won the Olympics. You look at Tara, you look at Christy, you look at Oksana Bayul, you look, they all found a way to get it done at world's. Even if they didn't do perfectly or medal, they usually really delivered well. Tara bombed the short, nailed the long. With Gracie, all the momentum that she had coming out of nationals, I honestly feel like is gone at this point. And she needs to really rebuild going into worlds. Um, well, I think you even talk about the Olympics next year. And that is echoing the hype that we, that we hear. If I were her coach, if I were someone closer, I'd say... No, you have five more years. You have years to worry about trying to be but an her Olympic coach isn't saying that. Her I know, but I'm saying this is what she needs to hear. Because when you hear all this hype, it's her first year really on this international stage. And she has so much talent. But instead of shielding her from that, I think that she's kind of falling prey to all the talk. And that's just mounting pressure on a girl who doesn't seem to have the tools yet. Or perhaps wasn't born with those tools to really thrive off the pressure. And with an athlete like that, whether it's working with a sports psychologist or having people around her, and perhaps she does with her parents, to just say, block it all out. It doesn't matter. You're going to world. I don't care what you place. The truth is, is if this girl skates two clean programs, the results will, will handle themselves. She has nothing to worry about there. It just is shutting her ears to what's going on around her. Yeah, I think it's a problem. Her coach is very Russian and said, you know, if we do well, she win. You know, and I think... Uh... That's a, that's a lot for her. I think sometimes, you know, I interviewed Tara Lipinski and she honestly feels that the people who win have it. Some people have to work harder for it. You wonder if, you know, the Olympics is a lot of pressure. Can she do it? Can she not? She has the talent to do it. But I think we need to talk about her jumps and something yeah. that she does under pressure. She has a Russian coach. I actually struggle with some of these issues with her jump technique is I noticed that when Gracie gets under pressure, she lifts her shoulders and her arms. And you can see it on her Lutz is that her elbow is up here and it's out. Her elbow is sticking out and she she did double the Lutz in the long. Sometimes she falls and it's that shrugging and it, the arms are getting in the way of not jumping with her legs, something. And there's a disconnect upper and lower body going on that I personally see. I agree, and I think what happens is she tries to jump from her shoulders instead of jumping from her legs. And really, your arms should just assist you assist you in the jumps, but jumps come from your lower body. They come from your legs and really your torso, your core. Your arms are just there to go along for the ride. And when your arms start to come into play, it's going to throw you off. But she does... Some of the jumps, she, she does them so easily. We saw a triple salco in her long program, which was... Arms were down. Yeah, arms know? were down, and that's really... She has those jumper legs. She has that snap. She just needs to trust the legs, and it seems like one more thing before we go into her key to success heading into Worlds. It just seems like in that long program, it was like a, a spiral effect, that once she started to miss something, her head, and as an athlete, this is what happens your brain just starts to go really way too quickly, and all of a sudden, you're thinking your way through it, and you could see there was just... She wasn't there. She was in her head. So I think uh, one of the things she does need to work on is if she makes a mistake, just to kind of <laughs> take a breath and to keep going. And 
sometimes that comes in time but like you said there are some skaters who maybe are born with it more than others so looking ahead to worlds gracie gold's key to success will Jesus. be she needs starting to, off with that short program right Jenny. deliver a good clean short program she needs one this season and then it really comes down to just trusting herself she has to trust her training trust that she has so much talent ignore the hype as we talked about and again, put two clean skates together because this is that last competition heading into the Olympic season. You want to end on a good note. You want to end with the buzz in your favor. And I think she has the talent to do it. So finally, the skater who wasn't here this weekend, but we think it's pertinent to talk about is Ashley Wagner. Yes, Ashley, you know, she didn't have the great long at nationals, but we saw such great competitions for her uh, during the fall season and last year. She needs to be clean and consistent. Ashley doesn't have that triple-triple consistently in Arsenal. I'd be really surprised, honestly, if they put it out at Worlds after the troubles she's had. That's a whole season without another, another whole season without a triple-triple from her. Frankly, if she had it that nailed, I think we would have seen it by now this season. A little under-rotated, two-footed. You know, she can't have these two-foot landings at Worlds. She's a skater who, she did so well in the fall and now that we're seeing Yuna back, we're seeing Carolina do the flip in the lots, we're seeing Akiko do well. She's someone who could, if all of the ladies in the world do well, Ashley might actually move down, even though she's a better skater than she was last year. So she may need a little bit of help. She needs to deliver a little bit of help. She has these big jumps this year and really good landings, especially on her loop and her flip. Mm -hmm. I think she needs to... Uh, do that, so I would say key success for her, clean and consistent, no two foots. We got to see that triple triple, Ashley. Um, maybe needs a little bit of help and those big jumps with the good landings. So, uh, I agree, and I think that with Ashley, she does have that maturity that she has we haven't seen from her in, in previous seasons. She's putting it all together this season, coming out that Grand Prix final, skating really well uh, earlier in the season. So just put it together, skate well. I'd love to see her try that triple triple. And if you want to head into next season as an Olympic favorite, you have to do it the season before at Worlds. So these are the ladies to look for as we head into the World Championships. We will do a preview show for the World Championships a few weeks from now before that event. But we'd love to hear what you what you thought about the event. So leave us comments below. You can always send us an email at theskatinglesson at gmail.com to let us know what your thoughts were as well. All right. So as always, we'd like to remind you to hold an edge. <laughs> and, look and look sexy. sexy. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>